Hindsight is always 2020, and since starting the studio with my wife Nikki, I can honestly say that we got a lot of things wrong and a lot of things right. But if I had a chance to start everything over again, there are quite a few things that I would do differently than I did. There's also a few things that I wouldn't change. Number seven may surprise you. I'm just kidding. That sounds like something off BuzzFeed. So if you're getting into game dev, hopefully this will help you because this is how I would approach game dev if I was starting over. Number one is keep the focus on the design, not the code. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's just me. But when I am in the weeds of programming a system or programming something complicated, I can get so into it and sometimes forget that how I actually code the thing doesn't ultimately matter. It matters for me and the project organization and scalability, yes. But for players who pick up a controller and play the game, doesn't matter. I'm not saying that I would just throw good coding architecture out the window because that has importance. I think that I'm saying I've been in a place where I put too much focus on what the code looks like. And some of that energy that I spent could have gone into the gaming experience instead. This is just a really easy trap to fall into. And this might be because I'm a self-taught programmer. Many indie devs are. And so it can be really easy to wonder if we're doing things the right way or the industry standard way when really getting a kick-ass game into players' hands is what ultimately matters the most. I am curious though, let me know in the comments below if this happens to you as well. Do you maybe spend a little too much time with the code and is there a better balance you could find? Number two is keep some time set aside for experimenting. The problem with either always working on YouTube videos or always working on my game is that I don't always have the time that I wish I had to either experiment with something new or learn something new. Game dev is a creative field. It's an art. And I feel like with any art form, there needs to be room for experimentation and there needs to be room for expression. And a good way to do that is to try new things that you've never tried before. Doing that will help keep you inspired. It's gonna keep fresh ideas coming and it'll help keep game dev fun for you. Cause it is obviously fun, but it's also a grind. But there is a secret benefit to this as well. Experimenting, playing around, learning new skills, all of that over time is going to start to boost your confidence. I recently saw a really awesome video posted by Code Monkey where he was just talking about he has the skills to basically be able to create any kind of game that he wants. That's a really exciting prospect. I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but I am very excited to reach that point. Having confidence in your own creative abilities will serve you very well in this field. Number three is I would have started using assets sooner. I have noticed that the more skilled I become in game dev, the less I feel the need to create everything myself from scratch. And for me personally, I am mostly talking about systems or tools to help me build the game. I recently made a top 10 tools video on this channel, but I went really deep into learning every single one of those assets. And diving that deep into that many tools that were created by other people really gave me a heavy appreciation for how much work and time they could save me. Obviously, you were going to need to create custom tools for your game. That is 100% unavoidable. But if you're working on a game that you expect might take you a couple of years to complete, if there's a handful of tools that you think could collectively save you a couple of months of time over the course of those couple of years for a fairly small price, that just sounds like a no-brainer to me. A lot of game dev and continuing to muster that inner motivation and the focus it takes to keep working on your game, a lot of that comes down to how you are feeling. If you're feeling down overall, unless you're exerting a lot of willpower, which takes a lot of energy, it's just likely that progress on your game is gonna go down too. And the same can be said when you are feeling awesome. It goes both ways. And just personally, I find that using tools and getting them integrated into my project and making that much progress that quickly, it makes me feel good, even if I didn't build it, because that is a lot of progress you can make in just a couple of days. And this feels like a really good segue into my next point, because there's a really important reason that I talk about feelings so much on this channel when it comes to indie game development. There's a reason that my podcast intro says what it says. Let me give you an example that I heard once that just kind of made everything click for me. Let's say you're living in an apartment and you're feeling lazy and unmotivated. Dishes are piled up in the sink, there's empty beer bottles everywhere, there's empty pizza boxes everywhere. Right, the place is just a mess and you don't really have the energy to do much more than lie down on the couch and watch TV and you're just miserable. Then the phone rings. It's that cute girl you like. She wants to come over so that you guys can go out on a date and you're looking around at your apartment and your energy is going to change 
very radically. You've never cleaned and gotten ready so fast in your entire life before. Nothing actually changed. There was just a switch that went on up here. And that is the whole point behind number four, focus on the wins. By the way, real quick, if you're enjoying the video, then thank you if you leave a like or a comment. I went through a little spell for a couple of months where I felt like I was just failing at absolutely everything in every aspect of my life. I was working more than anyone else I knew, making way less money. And as a result of working so much, other important areas in my life, like chores and just general adult responsibilities, responsibilities as a dad, responsibilities as a husband, those parts of my life were all suffering. Now there were some tweaks to my lifestyle that needed making. I feel like everything's always just about adjusting to find the right balance. But one of the most important elements for me was what was I focusing on? And I was focusing on, for a good time there, a lot of work, for very little money, failing dad, failing husband, etc., etc. And during all of that time where I felt like I was failing at everything, there were actually a lot of wins that flew right past me that I didn't even take the time to appreciate and enjoy. There are milestones with your game that should be celebrated. If you have a YouTube channel, there are milestones with view counts and subscriber counts that should be celebrated. I'm just saying, focusing on the wins, it makes a big difference in how you feel. Have you ever tried to find decent indie game dev gear? I have, and there was not a whole lot of good options out there. For years, I actually resorted to having Nikki make it for me. So if you would like a way to support the channel and get some of that hard to find clothing that speaks to your game dev soul, check out our awesome new merch shop. From cozy hoodies to pixel perfect tees, our gear is designed for and by passionate developers like you. Support the dream, wear the passion, and join us on the indie journey. Number five, stop giving people release dates when you don't know. This is something I try really hard not to do anymore. If someone specifically asks me when my game is coming out, I tell them what I'm shooting for, what I'm hoping for, but I will not give out definitive release dates until I know for sure. There's just a lot of potential downsides to giving out potential release dates and not a whole lot of upside until you know definitively when your game is going to come out because you're really close to that point. Number six, build a brand. This is one of those things that I think we've done really well from the start, and it's not something that I would change at all. But I am a YouTuber now, which is a really weird thing to say, but I am. So I am a little bit biased on this point. So take what I say with that grain of salt in mind. However, building a brand doesn't have to mean you create YouTube videos. But I do think that there's a lot of wisdom and that it's just a really smart business decision to be building an audience while you are building your game. What kind of content you create to build that audience is up to you. How often you release content, every Thing. It's all up to you. But I am a strong believer that it's very, very important to have an audience that is there, that is interested in what you are creating, and they are there waiting to buy your game when your game actually gets released. Otherwise, it's really just luck that you're depending on. Plus, when you build your own brand, there is a lot of just little perks that come along with it, like finding playtesters suddenly becomes much, much easier. You're going to be getting more feedback on your game than you possibly know what to do with, which is kind of a pro and a con. Okay, number seven is probably the most important important thing that I would do differently. Most indie developers that I know do not make enough time for it, but it is one of the most important things that you can do as an indie developer, and that is play games. If you're familiar with Stephen King, he once said, in order to be a writer, you must do two things above all else. You have to read a lot, and write a lot. Creativity is something that needs to be revitalized and replenished. And as someone who creates games, you're gonna get cool ideas, you're gonna get inspiration, or even just a really well-deserved break when you play other people's games. The other thing is, whether you realize it or not, once you have started to create games, when you play games, you'll never view them the same way again. Some analytical part of your brain will be working, studying, and trying to figure out how they did what they did with their game. Playing games with a critical eye is one of the best ways that you can get better at level design and just design in general. But even if you're not playing with a critical eye, the more games you play, the more it's just being absorbed into your subconscious, and you'll just have a bigger well of creativity to draw from. That's all I got, guys. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one. Bye.